Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I heard about Stork retiring while I was streaming my watch party uh, some weeks ago, and I ended up rambling a bit about my feelings and thoughts on it and the effect on the scene and that kind of thing, so I thought I'd share in case you were interested in hearing that ramble. Here you go. Stuff right now. <clears throat> Stork retired? Oh man. Well, that that lets me know how he did in the ASL too. Oh man. Stork retires from competitive StarCraft. <clears throat> Hold on a second, guys. This is this is important. This is important news. I'm gonna read this. Stork retires from. Uh, I've been traveling around the country for amateur tournaments since I was 16, 17 years old. And in the blink of an eye, I've now spent more than half my life playing StarCraft, supported by my fans' loves. Personally, while I was riding the buck bus back to Seoul today, memories of me sleeping on a bus challenging me to be a pro gamer came back, so I was really happy. Although it is a shame that I could not deliver great results, I do not have any regrets since I've been practicing skipping streaming, just like in the old pro gamer, pro gamer days. I've been under pressure due to my deteriorating skills despite the efforts and I participated in this tournament for the fans as my last. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show better games. Thank you all for your support, everyone. <sighs> oh. Yeah, no, that's okay, Merle. I mean, like... Yeah, we usually try to avoid spoilers, but like that's that's big news. That's like big news. Like spoiling a couple games for some news like that is uh, it's okay, I think, because that's like, oh man, I was already having a shitty week, and now this is like the poop icing on the shit cake. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> Man. But, you know, I mean, let's look at what he says, though. Like, he says, you know, he's been doing this for half of his life. Because he's old now. He was 16 years old. Now he's in his 30s. He's got a family, right? He's got, you know, other stuff going on. Riding back um, on the bus, memories of me sleeping on a bus challenged to be a pro gamer came back. So, like, it's kind of cool that he's thinking of it that way, right? That, you know, this was his dream. Like, there was a time when he didn't know he was going to be successful. And he it was his dream to become a pro gamer. And now he can look back on it and say, I was one of the greatest, most accomplished pro gamers to have ever lived in the hardest, uh, most uh, epic game that has ever been played in esports. Like, he can look back and say, he freaking did it. Like he he had a dream when he was 16 years old and he made it happen more hardcore than almost anyone ever does. You know, a uh, few people can can not just realize a dream that is so lofty, but be so su successful at it, you know. And um, that's pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm so I'm glad that he can kind of look at it in that context now. Right. Like. He's he says thinking of his early days when he was struggling, he's happy. Um, and of course, you know, it's a very polite Korean sort of cultural thing to be like, well, I'm sorry to my fans that I couldn't give results and that kind of thing. It's interesting. He says he's been really but he, that means he's been really focused on this. He was skipping streaming just like in the old programmer days. So, he, you know, streamers are not really practicing for tournaments very well when they're streaming. They stream to make a living, but that's not actually practice. It, not the best kind of practice, at least, right? Practice is doing builds, not showing how your style is because you're playing games with other pro gamers um, uh, in, in LAN, ideally, I guess, if it's with your team, or, you know, custom games. You're not on the ladder. You're playing custom games with people that you know that, that you can trust to refine your builds and focus on the tournament match. Playing those maps, practicing your builds, etc. And so Stork has been hardcore preparing for this 
this tournament like that. He's like, this is, I've been preparing, for, pra skipping my streaming so I could prepare for this like the old days. So he really wanted to show his best because it sounds like he knew this is going to be his last tournament no matter how he did. Like even if he won, he would probably retire. Because uh, he's been like balanced on the edge of retirement for a while, honestly. Um, you know, a couple seasons ago when they did Team League, he was like kind of complaining about his how he didn't play very well anymore and all that stuff. And like, you know, he hasn't been really super competitive in a long time. So getting to the round of 16 was was impressive and a little bit surprising anyway. Um, so I, I so I, I would not be surprised if, if this was his last tournament regardless, you know. Um, so it's too bad that he couldn't get farther, like get to the semifinals or something like that. Get a, even get like get a little third place to go out on or something like that. But but, you know, um, that's cool that he was able to at least do it. He got through the the prelims he got through the group stage and then he got to the group of death right exactly I and mean, he's like he's in the group of death if he was in an, another group if he's in like group b or something like that he probably would have won or gotten to the round of eight i think um so it, you know it's nothing to be too ashamed of that he was in the group with the best terran one of the best, Zer probably the best Zerg, probably the best Terran and the best Zerg still playing right now. And one of the top Protoss is playing right now. If maybe top, probably top two or three Protoss. It's like he was in the group of death, the hardest group you could po almost possibly imagine right now. And so it's not super surprising that he got out, um, but it's unfortunate. But um, that's interesting that he's retiring. I, I wonder if he's probably, he's probably still going to stream though, right? It would be my guess because even though he's retiring from it seems like a lot of a few players have done that recently like effort um is um not playing in asl and not like practicing super hard but he's still playing show match games and spawn games sponsored games and like streaming and stuff like that so stork may do the same thing and he's just re retiring from you know the competitive uh tournaments basically because he had to stop streaming and like commit a lot of time and effort and energy to really trying his best for this tournament, right? And that's that's something that you it's hard to commit that much to, especially if you're in your 30s and you've got a kid and a family and all that stuff, you know. So um, anyway, that's um, that's sad to hear though, because I would I love rooting for Stork and I was I was uh, you know been a fan of his since since for 14 years and i've been a friend of his a little bit too in a way not I mean, not a friend but like i met him a couple times and i've like had chats with him i had a i had like a long like an hour-long conversation with him at a twitch twitch uh twitch party after blizzcon or something like that five six years ago he's a really nice guy and um and uh so it's too bad that he won't be in the scene anymore but that's how it goes and it's interesting, it's interesting to think about, too, like, what does it mean for the scene when, like, Effort stepping back, Stork stepping back, Flash is probably gone, um, you know, Best has stepped back as well, Larva stepping back, um... This means all noobs. <laughs> no, noob didn't make it either. <laughs> um, so it's it's interesting, but but then you do have sort of newer players that you know, or not newer, but newer uh, people showing up like Mini, you know, um, who who are taking the reins and like so it may not be the end of the scene altogether. A lot of these really uh legendary players are stepping back but can the korean scene go on without the legends in it if there's no old school legends left is it as interesting i guess it depends on if you're watching for the nostalgia or if you're watching for the games because the games are arguably as good as ever and you know you watch Tastos's casting and their, their minds are blown on a regular basis by how 
the the newer up and coming players are shifting the meta all the time by uh, coming up with new strategies. Gateway first versus Zerg. Like PVZ was was uh, stuck for like 10, 12 years. And it's changing now because of the way, di way different players are playing it. Um, PVT is changing as well. So um, it's, uh, I don't know, it's interesting. That it, you know, it, in, in some ways, it's sad that all these legendary players are going out, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of it. But it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I mean, StarCraft's been going on for 20, over 20 years. And it's not going out, it's not like, it's still around. So it's like, you can never really predict the end of uh, of the StarCraft scene. Although it has been kind of aiming downwards in recent years, you know? <clears throat> so. Anyway. All right, I just needed to take a little side rant about that. We can get back to watching the, uh, watching the ace match. All right, now that we're processed a little bit 2021 let's go back and pretend none of that happened and we're back in 2011 again and all of the legends are still alive and playing at their peak and it's best versus flash and the ace match of the pro league finals and everything is good and happy in the world and now i can catch up on chat <laughs> 